and big presentations, they are very formal. And they are designed to be formal because you are making formal recommendations to the Department of Energy. Um, but there is a place to have meetings that are much less formal. And rather than have a, a big meeting room um, and invite people to come in and make public comment, they have a much more open forum and are much more relaxed. Uh, certainly the presentations are not nearly as technical. They are at a level that is more understandable to the layperson, and that is our general goal for those meetings. And in, uh, rather than being in a central location, they move around and try to go to the smaller communities around Savannah Riverside. And that has been the focus of those meetings. Often we're, um, the whole point of them is to do outreach to minority communities that might not have the chance to come into these CAD meetings. As one member of the public noticed yesterday, these CAD meetings are full meetings that run all day long during the day when many people are working. So it's difficult for um, folks to get to all of them or even to get to one of them. Um, SRS also has other community meetings. Your, your committee meetings are in the evening, so those are a lot easier to get to and make comment at. But we uh, have worked with the Department of Energy and uh, the Lisa Bratcher has been our, um, our contact with the Department of Energy as the program lead to work with us and co-host these meetings and go out to smaller communities and give them a chance to hear what's going on at Savannah Riverside as far as cleanup. And it is a, it's kind of a broader uh, scope of the cleanup. And, um, and give input back to EPA, the states when they can attend, and, um, and to the Department of Energy. And also to hear about how things are going. Um, so normally we have folks like Brian Hennessy come and give presentations, but one of the ones that is usually of most interest, interest to people that live around the site is what Gail Whitney has to say, because she does the environmental monitoring. That's her program, and she can tell people what's actually coming off the site that might impact them. Um, so that's the focus of those meetings. That's the reason we have them. Um, and I'd like Kyle to tell you a little bit about the last two we had and the one that we're going to have this evening as well. Thanks, Rob. Good morning, Kevin. Uh, as Rob mentioned, I'm the Community Involvement Coordinator from EPA assigned to the Savannah River site. And since FY12, we've hosted 10 community EJ meetings, and this is the third one of this fiscal year. Our first one of this year was in the Shell Bluff community of Burke County, and our Second one was in Waynesboro because of, of such great turnout in Shell Bluff. It was still in Burke County, but there was another group that uh, it stormed like crazy that first night, and we had a decent turnout, but we had another one within a month later in uh, Waynesboro, and we had an even greater turnout. Uh, one of the things that we've noticed, and this ties into the budget situation, is that Whenever things get cut uh, due to budget constraints, usually there are things that are not considered as mission critical, like community outreach, kind of things like that. So uh, what we've done to sort of address that through these community meetings is that we try to introduce more uh, train-the-trainer type of opportunities in giving these communities information about our grants and resources to find out how to help themselves and empower them more so it's less labor intensive on the community outreach components of our agency. Mm -hmm. And uh, so some of the topics that we're covering, like all of our meetings that we've hosted for this fiscal year, are an overview of EPA's role with SRS and environmental monitoring from Gail Whitney. And agency grants and resources is what I present on, as well as community capacity building. That way we can let communities know about what resources our agency offers, and not just grants from EPA, but the whole federal family, because there are many resources that work tangentially with our resources that are competitive grants, but still helpful for communities that might have a redevelopment issue or just might not know how to get into the pipeline. My goal is to try to get communities to understand where the pipelines are, how to access them, and so when they communicate with me, it's not all of this long-term hand-holding, but basically point me in the right direction, give me the general information I need to get started and organize my community. And that's what makes us more user-friendly to them and then to us. 
And so our next meeting, uh, as Don mentioned earlier, is this evening at uh, 6 o'clock at the Barnwell Public Library at 40 Burr Street in Barnwell. Um, another thing I'd like to mention is uh, concurrently what's going on uh, this week, started yesterday, is the Teaching Radiation Energy and Technology Workshops put on by Savannah State University. They're being convened over at USC Aiken. Um, they're held annually. They say this first tree workshop is a three-day workshop where uh, through DOE funding, Savannah State University's environmental science professor, Dr. Kenneth Sajwan, hosts this workshop where he teaches middle and high school STEM uh, faculty about radiation and about EPA and South Carolina DHEC puts on a presentation as well. I did a presentation yesterday on capacity building and agency resources for those instructors. And today they're getting some general overview of radiation and how reactors work and things like that. But they get a stipend for that training. Um, sort of, I think it's like $300 for the three day event. So it's good to support teacher salaries during the summer. And they know more about DOE and all of their uh, partnerships in making SRS work. And so um, that concludes tomorrow. And so for those of you who can make it to the EJ meeting tonight, uh, we'd love to have you. I always take some cab literature and we talk about the cab at our meetings. And so we'd like to see that cross collaboration. And I'll take any questions if you have any. Maybe I have time for one question. How do you guys determine locations to have the meetings? Like Barnwell, Waynesboro, is there a consensus or how do you pick which communities? We usually rely heavily on our community partner, which has been uh, Reverend Jenkins, who's with the Imani group, because she's aligned with uh, many of the stakeholders in different uh, counties in South Carolina and Georgia. And what we do is try to uh, be equitable in terms of if we're in Georgia, one meeting, the next one we try to be in South Carolina community and we also look strategically at communities where we have not visited around the SRS boundary and we hit most of them by now. I know Marilyn's going to like this second part of the question. I tried to Google Environmental Justice South Carolina to get sort of a list of the upcoming meetings to post and I could not find it anywhere on the internet. Like where the meetings would be and where they would be next. Um, is there a website? There isn't a website that lists our meetings per se. Um, I mean, it has been a random process and it's based on what our budget is and, and what we're allowed to do, but uh, we're just trying to cover as broad areas as possible. We don't have a formalized website for that information, though. Okay, so it wasn't just my poor searching. Thank you.